In today's world, we have employees and server workloads everywhere. You mean actually distributed environments? Yeah, and let's not forget the complexity that cloud introduces as well. The expectation is that everything just works. Monitoring the performance and availability of devices can present many unique and challenging scenarios. Joining me today are product manager Stephen Hunt from our Austin office. Hey, how's it going? And Sean Zenz from our Ottawa office. Thank you for having me. What I want to do here is put you guys in the hot seat and throw out some monitoring scenarios and see what you guys can come up with. Let's do it. A little uh, US versus Canada, eh? All right, guys, let's start with the first scenario. Let's assume you've got two large offices that are connected via a uh, fast MPLS connection. How would you go about monitoring it? So there's a lot of different architectures that could come into play in, in the scenario, but let's talk about uh, a fairly common one, right? Um, so if, if we're trying to gather information from both the main office and the second office, typically what we would do is have a, you know, a server that's collecting my information over in the main office. Um, depending upon how much is over in my second office, right? Like how many servers, how many computers, what ultimately I'm trying to monitor. I'm gonna start looking at, do I need to just deploy a, an agent to connect out there or can I just do a direct connection and grab some information? Also kind of depends upon what information that I'm, I'm trying to get out of it. So I may have a scenario where I have an additional server on this side to start pulling information, gathering data from um, all the servers on, on the second office side um, or I could just do a direct connection from you know, here over to gather information directly from the servers. So it really comes down to what is it we're trying to gather and, and how many different devices are we trying to get it from. So my assumption is since we have an MPLS connection, really getting over the second office isn't the problem. It's the possibility of the latency introduced from going from LA to New York or things along those lines that could potentially justify a second uh, Orion instance or a polar in the uh, second office. Yeah, so it really depends on you know how far apart these connections are. Obviously, there's some limitations um, on on how well that connection is going to be established. You know, you're within a certain distance if you're if you've got that guaranteed uh, connection in place. Um, but it it's still important to understand you know what is needing to be collected in that second office, and then ultimately how much information do I need to get? Um, one of the key things that, that people often don't think about is from, from a collection standpoint, you know, what, what am I trying to get? Am I trying to just get basic metric information from an application or from a server itself? Um, or am I trying to like measure something from one office to the other? If I'm trying to measure something from one office to the other, then it's really important to understand um, what's going on in between this connection and how does that impact the collection aspect of um, things that are sitting over here in the, in the second office. Yeah, I think that a great example would be, you know, if you're looking at the web performance, if you're monitoring it in the second office, you're going to see you know, the milliseconds, it could be one or two, and it could double it to three or four, where if you're monitoring it from the original office, that one or two millisecond bump is minute because you've got the buffer of the whole actual transit of getting across to the second office. Right, the other thing you need to take into account is um, what happens if this connection fails? Right. If that connection wrong. goes down and I have a whole bunch of uh, devices that I'm trying to monitor uh, on this side, um, what notifications am I going to start getting? Right. Uh, typically, you're going to start flooding people with information. But if you can designate that all of these devices are dependent upon you know, the connection or the firewall or something on the secondary uh, side, then you can take in that into account and ensure that you know, once we've determined that there's a problem at this point of the connection, um, we know that there's, you know, there's an issue getting to the rest of that data and we don't have to flood any, everybody with a bunch of information. Gotcha. Um, now, would you just put a polar over here or would you actually do a whole second office? Would a polar queue up the data if you lost connectivity? Um, or would you put a whole second Orion instance over there? So that, that's a really good question. And um, again, it kind of depends on what I'm trying to collect um, and how much of it is there. Okay. But the, the aspect of, of being able to have the flexibility of a platform that will allow you to just direct connect and monitor stuff uh, agentlessly, um, or being able to deploy an actual agent on any of the devices out there and start collecting that information, um, you know, 
without having to deploy any additional resources out to actually start collecting that data. But if we're in a scenario where we're collecting a bunch of information um, or you know, the connection itself um, could be impacting the, the amount of data that needs to flow across, then I can stick that second polar inside the, uh, the second data center or the second site um, and allow it to be responsible for the collection of all the information um, and then send it back across um, to that main site. Yeah, I know we, we've got a couple um, large boat carrier cruise lines that actually have Orion instances on the boats just to collect the data because doing the whole stuff across the sat link would just kind of be pointless and kill everything. So they have unique instances on every single boat. So that would kind of be applicable in this scenario, although um, we're yeah, looking at boats instead of offices. And ultimately, um, you know, if, if you're trying to get information um, from one section to the other, you're also potentially trying to get it from at a certain interval, right? So your polling intervals are set to a certain um, setting to allow you to get the information that you need in the time that you need it. Um, if you have a connection from one site to the other that is not advantageous for being able to collect that data in that time frame, um, then you're going to have to have a solution that's going to allow you to collect that data and get it across. Um, and then you have to be cognizant about how much real-time data that you're trying to get at any given time. Um, because you can only get so much coming across that link. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, Sean, you've been pretty quiet on this scenario. I know you're part of the MSP mm -hmm. side of our business. How would you go about monitoring this, or is there anything different, or how would your solution look like? Yeah, for sure. So in this type of environment where, yes, it is connected via MPLS between the two offices, that, that type of scenario, that would look like, for example, a probe that's sitting on each one of the, the different locations here. And the responsibility of that probe is to go out, discover that environment, discover you know, network gear, for example, but especially things like the workstations in those environments, and actually distribute out agents to each one of those workstations automatically. So it'll go ahead and it'll push agents to those Windows devices, to those Mac devices, for example, and actually do the deployment for me to nice. go and collect asset information, collect the patch details and that type of, type of detail from those devices. Now, where does this report to when you're done? Do you have something in the cloud, I assume, or is there a yeah, yeah. Is so, it on-premises, off-premises? Yeah. So, so to answer that, the question is both. So, there's both a cloud solution as well as an on-premise solution. So, of course, I can have that solution sitting, you know, maybe in a data center, or perhaps we can actually, you know, host a solution for the customer. So, in that example, I'm logging into this solution, whether it's in the cloud or whether it's on-premise and actually from that console, connecting to each one of those devices, doing that patch management, doing that remote control, you know, what have you. Ooh, patch management. How do we uh, look at that from a, maybe a core standpoint? I mean, I know we're monitoring devices, but we sure as heck want them to be at least updated so nobody's getting some ransomware. Yeah, so there, there's a couple of different aspects, right? You know, we were talking um, about MSP type solutions uh, from Sean's perspective. And, and I know, you know most of our MSP customers, they're looking for like kind of that complete package, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to do all of that uh, within one. That, that single pane of glass we often say. Exactly. Um, oftentimes I find that a lot of our customers are looking for you know, point solutions, right? I'm looking for a monitoring solution, right? Or I'm looking for a patch and security solution, or I'm looking for a log analytics solution. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be fully integrated. It doesn't have to come with in one, uh, uh, one box, one umbrella. Um, luckily, we're able to provide many of those different types of solutions. Um, but oftentimes, it doesn't have to be so tightly integrated to be able to provide you know, the, the type of um, capabilities that, that customers are looking for. Again, MSP, they're looking for it all to be within one umbrella, right? Um, whereas with, with uh, the Orion products, we can we typically see the customers are going to want, okay, I want that monitoring solution, right? And I want network monitoring so I can monitor this aspect of it. And then I want server monitoring so I can monitor this aspect of it. Um, then I want web monitoring so I can measure what's going on from you know, this site to that site, things like that nature. Awesome. Now, I, I think you guys gave us a couple different scenarios on uh, deployment methods, on actually how your scenario is, you know, depending on the speed of your connection, what your polling interval is, what you're actually trying to monitor. If you're just trying to see is the second site up and just send some, a small packet across and grab that information, then you've got a lot of flexibility. But if you're trying to see beyond the firewall, look at the servers, the desktops, the antivirus status, things along those lines, you've got different scenarios. Um, but I think both are applicable to any individual. I mean, they both can figure it out and kind of figure out where they want to go next. Agreed. Absolutely. 
All right, let's look at scenario number two. Let's assume you've got a traditional office and you're adding some cloud in. How would you go about monitoring that? Well, a lot of the same principles apply in the scenario that we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, Typically, we're going to have that main server, that main polar in the uh, the main office. Um, the the complexity comes into the the cloud architecture. Really, how um, how are the users or how is the the business deployed those different resources within the cloud? Um, so smaller environments or more you know, cloud-focused environments, maybe the, they're transitioning a lot of their workloads into the cloud, um, they're going to probably have a, a, a need to do some remote collection, right? Okay. Um, so uh, you can, again, use that agent-based mechanism to uh, deploy an agent on the actual cloud uh, instances and collect the information that, that's necessary for that. Uh, another scenario that comes into play, especially with some of our larger customers, um, where they have established direct connections between their data center and the AWS sites. Okay. Um, this allows them to use the agentless based collection mechanism. Okay. Um, so they don't have to worry about necessarily agent deployment, but they do have to worry about the network connections, the network configuration between their main site and AWS servers. So all of the traditional aspects of agentless based collections apply as well. So in this example, we use AWS as our cloud provider, and you said we could use agent or agentless technology, depending if you've got your tunneling set up to pull information back to Orion. Do we have anything else that we can leverage since it is AWS? Um, one of the things that we can do and that our customers take advantage of uh, is a, an integration we have with the AWS APIs. So you can actually collect information uh, from AWS as a platform. There's some basic metrics, uh, CPU, I.O. that can be collected, uh, as well as um, you know, just metadata about the actual instances that are running. Um, gives you kind of an, uh, an inventory, if you will, of your cloud instances that are running and plus some of those ba basic metrics. So that allows you to get a sense of what is the cloud provider understand that you're actually uh, deployed and what you need to monitor um, then you know we mix that together we create a, a, a seamless um, view of that cloud provider data okay. along with the uh, the workload and operating system data um, you know that we can collect from our agent or agentless based mechanisms and put that together so I as a end user can see you know What's the cloud provider telling me? And then what is the, the operating system telling me about the workloads that are running? Gotcha, gotcha. Now, in this example, we definitely are doing you know, stuff from Amazon, dials, home. I know that's probably not the right term, but we're collecting from Amazon, pulling it to on-site. Uh, I know I've been going to shows, and I know we actually have another Thwack Camp session about this later on, but we do have the possibility to actually now put, or we have customers putting Orion out here and having the data go upstream, right? Right, so um, we have many customers out there that are deploying Orion in the cloud. Uh, so all it takes is just basically right sizing, getting the right uh, size instances okay. to, to deploy Orion. Um, and then you can run that literally in, in any of the uh, AWS data centers, uh, be able to, you know, we were talking about the multi-site scenario earlier. Yes. Um, in that situation, your main site is effectively the cloud, the public cloud, um, and then it can collect all of the information from any of the sites that you have of, uh, geographically dispersed. Sweet. No, I, th I think that gives us a good idea that treating the cloud is not any different than just a second site. You can pull the data and you know there's not any limitations to it using the Core Orion products. Um, Sean, do you have how would you manage this and tackle this scenario from a you know MSP point of view? Yeah, for sure. When you look at the the MSP solutions, um, it, it's very much the new normal for a lot of MSPs now to have uh, the the uh, what was traditionally an on-premise server sitting in the, you know, each one of these small SMB environments to now be sitting in a colo facility or in some cases, of course, sitting in Amazon. Okay. So what that looks like today is that we have the capability to deploy an agent to those devices that's sitting within that AWS instance, and that's calling home, per se. So that's calling back to uh, perhaps the MSP solution that's also in AWS, or even calling back to that uh, that solution that's sitting, you know, in the in the facility in the office of that that managed service provider, and it's reporting back details like uh, asset information on the server, utilization on the server, for example, and of course includes capabilities that uh, even allow you to take uh, corrective actions if you need to, so uh, trigger events and, and correct itself in some scenarios. Awesome. Now, 
I know we're not treating AWS any differently as our main office in these particular examples, but what if we have oops, a second cloud provider? Does that actually change the solution any on architecture, deployment method, or anything along those lines? Um, from an Orion standpoint, uh, it, it really doesn't. We're still looking at being able to collect the, the workloads, right? The information about the uh, the cloud VMs, cloud instances, depending upon which cloud provider you're talking about. Um, and that allows uh, you to grab, you know, the, the information from the operating system, from the application. Um, it could be AWS, it could be Azure, um, it could be Alphabet, Google, um, you know, or name any other of the, the third-party cloud providers out there that many, many customers may be using. Maybe an MSP that's hosting a small cloud? Exactly. Uh -huh. um, so that gives you kind of a, a sense of, you know, a still I can, I can have my, my polar in the main office. I can have mixed workloads, mixed cloud environments where I need to grab information coming from my servers, you know, from one side or the other. Um, and then, but I need to see that all together, right? Everything that I'm collecting from my main data center, from the cloud itself, um, I need to be able to see all of that information there. I mean, that's the world that uh, a lot of uh, our customers are living in today, right? That, that hybrid IT world. Um, it, it's important to be able to give them the visibility into that. Awesome. Sean, anything different from your point of view, or do you just, just another location, just throw an agent out there again? Exactly, it's just another location. Um, the, the comment there about a mixed environment I think is super interesting, especially for an MSP. Um, you know, as an MSP, as I, as I take over a customer, sometimes that, that server is sitting in AWS, and maybe that's my preferred place to put my, my environment. But that's not always true. You know, they walk into environments that uh, sometimes it is Azure, sometimes it is a, a third party. And uh, by deploying a, an agent to any one of those devices, it, it calls home regardless of really where it is. So I can take over those environments, I can you know, create that continuity between all my customers and create that single pane of glass that we talk about in, in MSP, uh, regardless of where those devices exist. Awesome. No, because as more workloads are going to the cloud, the hybrid IT is, is now the new norm, we at SolarWinds, we're not treating it any, anything different. We're still able to grab the data, put it into the same stuff you're using right now. We've got solutions for you know, multiple clouds or just AWS. We're able to pull that all in and, and report on it as if it was just in your current data center right now. Yeah, our customers don't really care, you know, I mean, they ultimately do care where the workloads are running, but what they really care about is being able to get information about that data regardless of where it's running. So it's important for them to have a solution that allows that flexibility. Um, so especially those that are transitioning from maybe a traditional all data center environment to a hybrid or to all cloud, um, they need something that's going to be able to transition with their business as well. Awesome. No, I think that does a good job of explaining where we're going to be on the hybrid IT. And uh, we'll move on to the next scenario. In this one, we've got a main office, and we've got a couple remote offices, but they're not connected by any type of internet. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed the theme where I'm going kind of big, big connection, big office, and then kind of bigger or smaller office, smaller, no kind connection. Kind of noticed, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So since you noticed, you win the prize, and I'll let you go first, because this sort of seems a little more MSP-ish. Um, how would you go about monitoring it or deployment methodology? Yeah, for sure. This, this to me, is, is kind of the bread and butter of the MSP solution. A, uh, a handful of small remote offices and, of course, a, a main office in this scenario. Um, in the MSP world, you know, what it looks like as an MSP is that I may have a, a customer that has a main office and a bunch of remotes, but keep in mind, I may have 100, 200 customers of, of all different shapes and sizes. Really. Uh, the, the, the core competency of, of the MSP solution. So, so what that looks like is within each one of these remote offices, I have a probe deployed to these devices. And what that probe is doing is it's scanning that environment, it's finding anything that has an IP address, and it's deploying out agents to those, those Windows devices and discovering asset information and, and setting up the monitoring. The other thing that probe is doing for me is it's scanning and discovering those network gear and monitoring the network gear for me automatically. So when it comes across, you know, I, I'm assuming there's a firewall, of course, and a router and a managed switch at each one of these locations. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> no, just, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to go ahead and discover those devices, classify them, and set up the, the details I would want as an IT professional, things like traffic monitoring and latency to those devices, and, and of course, simple things like uptime. 
that probe is going to stick around in that environment and those agents being deployed, of course, to those devices. And it's going to be providing a, a mechanism and a place to start doing things like patch management. So it can actually work as a cache and download patches that are necessary for each one of those locations and serve it to each one of those, those agents or, or devices in those scenarios. Uh, what's really neat about that is that it's only going to download the patches that are needed at that particular site. Um, and it's doing that based on the fact that the agent can sit there and discover, well, you know, is a patch missing and, and give the uh, technician or give the IT service provider uh, the power to approve, decline, remove, you know, what have you. And that's for, for both, of course, Windows and third-party patching in this environment. So in the scenario you're describing, are you saying that these are all different customer sites and that this is the actual MSP, or are you saying that this is one big organization? Yeah, so in my scenario, uh, I have the MSP as the main office, as you, as you okay. have drawn here. And each one of my customers are those remote offices. But this very much holds true if this was one large organization as well. Okay. Whether the MSP is the main office or not, we can put that, that probe at each one of these locations in phone home. Um, there's, of course, a, a concept within the MSP solution as well of, uh, of a main office and site locations as well as they collapse into a main office, for example. Now, Steve, you, you've been quiet. I know that's kind of hard to do. Can we tackle a scenario like this using the Orion products? Absolutely. So, um, you know, where Sean was talking about the, the probes being deployed in the remote office, um, we can do a lot of the same aspect. You know, if, if you have an on-premises solution that you, uh, you want to maintain, um, having Orion deployed, uh, say, in the main office, right, and then I want to deploy um, agents out to each of the remote office, um, just because I only have a small set of devices that I want to collect from. Um, there's a, a little bit of trick to that, just depending upon the architecture, right? You know, we, made it, we don't have necessarily a direct connection between the two. We don't have point to point or we don't have anything like that. We're purely going over the internet. One thing that you'll want to do is have a polar probably exposed in a DMZ, right? So allowing a, an agent to phone home back to uh, a, an Orion Polar, and it can send the data to it. And then all you have to do is just expose you know, one um, port out there um, for those agents to communicate with. And then at that point, you have a, uh, an easy communication between your, your main Orion server um, and that DMZ-based Polar. That allows all of your remote offices to uh, send all their data uh, necessary. Now, if you have a larger remote office, um, you you know more devices that you want to collect. You may think about putting you know remote pullers out at each of the office, and then collecting that information and sending it back to the main site as well. So you could bypass the DMZ if you had the pullers, or you would still need the DMZ to. Most of that's really going to depend upon, you know, what are your business requirements. Um, security organizations may say, hey, we have to have a certain level of uh, security aspect to that information traveling across. Um, so they may require a, uh, something being in the DMZ to collect all that information. Um, so it really comes down to your organization what the requirements are. But, you know, we have an architecture that supports uh, um, either scenario. Okay, because uh, this scenario actually came from an email thread I was reading on where it was an organization from Brazil. They had a bunch of remote gas stations, and they just had basic DSL, but they wanted to look at the little security cameras and, and printers and whatever else was at each location. So they actually put the agent on the POS machines and then used that to collect the information from the security camera, the printer, and all that, and then basically pipe that information back home. Yeah, and, that, and that's really the, the benefit and the flexibility of, of the agent-based methodology is, um, you know, depending upon what devices you have out there, um, we have an ability to give, allow you to deploy, you know, that agent maybe on one of those devices, that point of sale device, um, as opposed to having to have a dedicated uh, box there for collection of information. Um, you can just put it on that point of sale device, um, have the agent running, collect the information, and then again, send it back to the main office. So Steve, I mentioned and you mentioned putting the agent on the point of sale device. Now, is there another way we could maybe put a SAM agent on something else and sort of use it as a little probe out there? Yeah, so one of the things that, that we have available, um, we can actually deploy the agent to a, a Linux ARM device. So uh, with the Orion agent for, for Linux, um, there is an ability to install that agent on uh, ARM-based devices. Uh, and then 
you don't have to worry about necessarily um, trying to find a, a you know, Windows device or a um, uh, an, another x86 device. Okay. Uh, you can actually have that deployed on there. Um, so it has a really small footprint, right? Um, allows you to just use that that very small, um, some in some instances, a easily disposable device. If it breaks, uh, something happens to it. Um, you know, it, it, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, they're like 50 bucks. Right. So then you can start the collection of the information with that simple device, um, and it's very easy and cost effective to to deploy that. Yeah, no, I think that would be, like you said, really easy. Just throw it in the corner. It'll sit there, gather the data, and, and then shoot it back home for you to manage and monitor. Exactly. I know we've talked about MSP just prior as a complete solution, but do you have anything more to add to this diagram and how you would monitor it or options? Yeah, for sure. When you start talking about all these different remote locations, uh, and as an as a, a IT service provider that has to do the whole gambit, I have to start providing things like not just patch management, but also start providing the security solutions in these environments too. So what that looks like in the MSP solution is that each one of these Windows devices, for example, I have the capability to deploy out an antivirus solution and manage that from that single pane of glass we were talking about earlier. So that means that um, as, a, as a technician or as a service provider, from that one console across my, let's say, 250 customers, I am doing that patch approval, I'm uh, doing that uh, antivirus uh, exclusions, configuration, remediation of course, um, and doing that uh, uh, in bulk or through policies for each one of my, my end devices. Um, and, and being as it's a, a policy driven solution, meaning that uh, I can create these, these um, uh, core profiles, these core settings, and reuse them over and over again. I can create that scenario that, you know, for those, those more advanced users, for those users that need more flexibility, I'm creating a, an AV solution that perhaps is a little bit more forgiving, a little bit lighter. It allows them to explore the depths of the internet a little bit more. But uh, of course, for, you know, those users that create more tickets and struggle more with their computers, uh, I have a more lockdown solution. And uh, I'm able to, to change that on the fly should I need to or, or disable it when I need to do uh, some troubleshooting, for example. All right, so on to our final scenario, which I think is right up your alley. We've got a small to medium business or startup. I keep picturing Silicon Valley working from the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. No actual server infrastructure, just a lot of guys on laptops or gals. And then SaaS-based, email, CRM, documentation, whatever. So no infrastructure outside of laptops. How would you uh, handle this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so in this type of environment, you know, as an MSP, how I'd handle something like this is, you know, as you mentioned, there's no server in this environment. So I'm putting agents on each one of these devices. Now, these devices could be Windows, of course, which means I'm getting my patch management, we're doing AV, you know, those type of details. Um, but, you know, in my mind, when you said Silicon Valley, I went MacBooks, uh, MacBooks. Yep, Mac 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 everyone has MacBook. Uh, so with that, that scenario, of course, uh, we're deploying Mac agents to these devices. So with these Mac agents, I'm uh, getting the capability to do scripting to them. So as an MSP, my, my goal, my everyday goal is to drive efficiency, you know, save time as an MSP. So with these Mac devices, I can uh, schedule reoccurring scripting, I can do my maintenance automatically. Uh, then with these devices as well, well, you know, I know Windows devices, they get all the, the hype when it comes to patch management. Uh, but I, of course, can script the patch management from my Mac devices too. So, so I can do that shell connection. I can run that, the, the script on those devices and make sure they're up to date. Now, with these devices, when we start talking about, you know, these small startups that uh, I'm going to assume are roaming around as well. You know, they're going to your local coffee shop. I stayed at a Best Western, yeah, one of those guys. Exactly. Um, they have unique support requests. So because this device is roaming around the world, I need to make sure that when they are sitting at a Best Western and they need, uh, need help from that, maybe that IT service provider, that I can get to them on demand. So with that being said, you know, these agents come bundled with remote control software that as long as that device is online, and whether that's a Mac, whether that's a Windows, okay. that, that, that really, really doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, as long as that device is online, it's calling home. It's reporting status back to, you know, back to my MSP solution. And I can, you know, with a click of a button, get access to that device, get onto the desktop, troubleshoot with that user, and you know, do the things that I need to in a remote, uh, remote control software, like doing file transfers and stuff like that. Uh, that's all available through that, uh, that device. 
So I saw the scenario as you know, me being an MSP, how I'm providing you know, services to these devices. Um, there's a, there's a kind of secondary component that comes along with that, you know, the needs of an MSP, which are, well, how do I show value? So these devices are reporting back asset information. The statuses of my monitoring is, is all rolling up into reports okay. that, you know, traditionally the, the consumer of that style, or consumer of that report, I should say, is, uh, is the business owner or, you know, in my startup is the, uh, the young business owner in my startup. Um, but that's my perspective when it comes from, you know, if I'm providing services, you know, as an MSP. But, uh, you know, in this scenario, I, I also envision, of course, well, it is a startup, it is a small organization, you know, maybe there is that, that whether it's a business owner or another technical user in that environment that, uh, that is providing, you know, support to the other devices in that environment. Well, it doesn't really matter if they are an MSP in that scenario, you know, they can still log into the same solution, see the same, same dashboard, dash. and provide the, the same style uh, support to each one of those devices. And like I said, regardless if it's a Mac or a Windows device or, you know, what have you. Now, I know you're not able to support on the software side, you know, the CRM and all that, but at least using your solution, you're able to say, hey, you're not even online. There's, that's why email's not working. And, you know, you could at least sort of troubleshoot the internet a little bit if they're reporting in or not. Because I've had customers been, I came from an MSP background, that they were at a cafe and didn't have internet, and then they're sitting there calling in, why is email not working? Mm -hmm. With, with no help. further details than why is email not working? It's yeah. not email, and in, in this case it was on-premises, but you don't have internet, therefore email's not working. Mm -hmm. So I'd assume you kind of use the process of elimination to sort of help a little bit on the SaaS side by just going, hey, you've got high latency or it is slow. Exactly. I, yeah. yeah, your experience of checking out your stuff is going to be bad or good. Mm -hmm. Now, Typically, we don't necessarily think of this as a uh, Orion solution, but we do have plenty of people that go from a MSP, um, hey, I've got a couple users, and then they gradually get bigger and bigger, and still don't have any actual infrastructure that they do embrace the, the cloud. Um, are there ways to transition from MSP to possibly core Orion type platform stuff? Uh, so, for, from my perspective, uh, you know, it, it comes down to the the economies of scale, right? A lot of customers that when they're looking for an MSP solution, um, it's because they typically don't have the economies of scale that require them to own their own solution, um, manage their own solution for understanding what's going on in their yeah. environment. Um, but if you know, ideally, they're successful. The business has grown, um, and they've started to uh, go beyond those economies of scale. Maybe they're they're starting to hire a few IT guys. Um, in that scenario, you know, you still have those devices out there, you still have them sitting at the, the kitchen table or at the, the local coffee shop, um, and, and they're needing to get access to applications. So um, if they don't have a, you know, say a, a data center or an infrastructure that, you know, that kind of supports the, uh, the on-premises uh, model, okay. if they want to actually understand, okay, what is the state of the SaaS applications I'm using, um, you know, what does the typical interaction of what the, the user is going through look like, um, you know, they could actually deploy um, an Orion instance in the cloud. You know, we were talking about that aspect earlier. Uh, you know, they could deploy it in there. They can look at things like, uh, you know, what is happening with regards to the typical uh, web transactions, right? The login aspect of, of uh, the user trying to reach uh, their SaaS application. Um, try to hit different pages associated with that. They can actually record that transaction uh, using something like Web Performance Monitor and then play back that synthetic transaction transaction and then from a uh, uh, just how is this SaaS application functioning when it's trying to do that user typical user interaction um, what does that look like is that problematic we may not necessarily understand you know directly from user a to that SaaS application but we can at least understand user a's uh, interaction uh, with that application from a synthetic standpoint um, if you want to go a little bit more in depth to say I want to just monitor those services um, as a whole, I want to look at you know, the auth and service aspect of those uh, SaaS solutions, I can also deploy something like server and application monitor. That'll give me a sense of actually, you know, I can script up and understand 
uh, Office 365 is a perfect example, right? right. What are the, uh, the O365 services? Um, what's the health of those services? Um, what's the health of my account associated with those services? And, and ensure, you know, from a synthetic transaction and from a service uh, health and availability standpoint, um, I can see all of that within one thing. And we don't have to have, again, a, uh, an instance of Orion running back here in, because there is no main office site, mm -hmm. right? Um, with the flexibility of being able to deploy that in uh, you know, public cloud provider. Um, I can have it there, I can reach out to these different SaaS solutions, get a perspective um, on them, and then ensure that you know, my user's experience should be ideal, and then it comes back to what's happening on the end user device, right? Uh, I know that everything from a, uh, a SaaS application standpoint is all functioning the way I, I expect it to be. If I were a remote user, essentially Orion in the cloud is that remote user for you, um, so it gives you that sense, um, but then there's still that aspect of needing to understand what's happening on the end user device. Um, so that, you know, there's kind of that, that hybrid so the transition. MSP, so the MSP still could come into play though, that they're monitoring the desktop, saying it's online, you don't, you have rebooted recently, you don't have 500 things open, that, mm -hmm. you know, this guy should be working, it's working from the cloud, you know, your, your hosted instance over that, everything looks like it should be good to go. Right, and again, if, if, if they've grown and they have economies of scale, um, they might want to look at something uh, like Dameware, so they, they may transition off that MSP uh, hosted solution, someone taking care of it for them, um, and then have that, that uh, that their own solution available for them to then support their end users as they need to. And again, it all comes back to economies of scale. What What is the size of the organization? Um, does it make cost-effective sense to have someone manage it for me through an MSP-based solution? Um, or does it make sense for me to own my own IT aspects uh, and ensure the delivery to, to my end users? Awesome work, guys. Thanks for being in the hot seat and coming up with some unique answers to these various scenarios. It really was pretty easy. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. I see it how it is. As you just heard and saw, monitoring organizations that are large or small. Or in one location or many. Or the cloud. Yes, multiple locations or multiple clouds can provide unique monitoring environments. Both a little bit of thinking, each can successfully be monitored. For Thwack Camp, I'm Jared Hensel. I'm Stephen Hunt. And I'm Sean Zenz, and thanks for watching. Yeah. Thwack Camp!